We have got an adventure coming up this January that I could not be more excited for. Uh, this is our very first journey, water safari, so to speak, and we're going to India for a water sutra to learn from Rajendra Singh, the water man of India himself, and to experience these areas where they have revived the flows of rivers through these community actions. And so this is a really unique, interesting journey. I can't wait. I've been to some of these areas before. There's gonna be some new areas that I've never been to. We're gonna be going to different eras of the work, ranging from areas where the work was done three, four decades ago to areas where they're just starting to do the work. So we can really understand the timeline and the trajectory of how to revive a river. Getting the opportunity to spend time with, you know, essentially a water Gandhi figure is, is something beyond words. It'll impact you in ways you won't even realize for years. You know, from a handful of days with Rajendra, this really broadened my perspective to understand how community efforts can accomplish the same kind of land healing results that I was well acquainted with. And this really opens the door to this happening everywhere in every community around the world. You know, only certain places can they afford to bring in big machines to make big changes, but people with nothing but a place of earth to work with, earthlings with access to earth, can make this change. And so on this trip to these places, you really experience how communities can mobilize and use the resources that they have available to them to heal the earth, to work with water, to work with nature, with love and respect and reverence. And it's a really incredible opportunity. You know, seeing these places myself, it's, hard life even with the water that they have and you can easily see without that water I can't imagine trying to survive in that landscape I mean these are dry desolate places far away from anything and you see how healthy and thriving these communities can be once they have a little bit of water and it just drives home how when you make this impact with water it creates these ripple effects all throughout to the point where in these areas now, girls and women are going to school where they weren't before because they had to carry water all day. And so you can't imagine the different types of impacts that this creates, that just this one foundational stress, water scarcity can create violence, can create gender inequity, can create death and loss and destruction and just flipping our perspective around water and how we treat it when it meets the land, that can shift everything. And it can shift things you wouldn't even imagine like gender equality in these really profound ways. And when we look around the world, there's lots of water related issues right now. Water scarcity, food scarcity, flood, drought, fire, and all of these things are man-made disasters. There's nothing natural about them. And so we can really learn from this traditional way of working with water, how people have activated it in the modern day and the modern era to create a better common future. And this is an amazing opportunity to witness this firsthand, experience it, know it in your bones and in your core. And you can just talk about it in a different way when you've seen these places for yourself. There's the tacit learning that comes from experiencing a place that there's really no replacement for. And so I'm really excited to, in a way, you know, kind of take it back to the roots. Uh, long, what, about a decade ago, a little bit more, we were organizing trips to Austria for English speakers to learn from SEP. And now it's really amazing to now be organizing similar trips to India to learn from Rajendra. You can learn so much from these elders. They have so much wisdom and so much experience. And you can just kind of absorb it osmotically by being around them. And so this is a really unique opportunity to visit and experience these areas, to 
learn from the indigenous wisdom of this area and to go deep into India in the local cultures of these parts of Rajasthan, really understanding what life is like there. And so this adventure is happening January 11th to the 25th. We have excellent hosts, amazing hosts. We're gonna basically be traveling from the airport back to the airport all together. So the whole journey will be in mini buses and on trains together, making use of the travel time and visiting these different areas where Rajendra has been working. And so first we'll go to the ashram, his temple, the place of learning of knowledge of indigenous water systems, of how to work with landscapes, how to work with communities, how to make and create community efforts. And we're gonna see the first water body that Rajendra built by hand. We're gonna see the communities that that impacted and the impact throughout the region. Then we're going to go into a newer area where they've been working more recently over the last decade or two in Chambal. This is an area that was desolate and destitute, that was really violent, that wasn't necessarily a safe place to go. And now something like 6,000 bandits have given up their arms, given up their weapons and become peaceful farmers. And this is just from having water. No one wants to be violent. No one wants to be a criminal. It's when you have no other choices. And so this project is a really amazing example of how water and peace interrelate in this really deep, meaningful way. And when you have water scarcity, it's really hard to have peace and prosperity. And so we'll see these areas, how they were transformed then we'll go to some newer areas that they've been working in Jaipur and we'll move all the way up into the desert in Jaisalmer. And these are areas they're just starting to work where there are these traditional step wells, a great tradition and reverence around water and a landscape that really is in need of this type of water healing. So we'll really be able to move through the journey through the time periods seeing what the results of their work, more recent results, even more recent, and what it was like before. And this gives us a really good sense of what's possible. So this is an amazing opportunity to travel with a group of incredible people, to learn from uh, one of the real heroes of this planet, uh, someone who's helped start movements that have revived the flow of rivers, reduced temperatures by two degrees in the region, brought water back to 250,000 wells, caused reverse migration where people were able to return to their homelands and have a real viable, prosperous future. And so this is a really unique opportunity to get to visit one of these areas, to learn directly from the people who did the work and to learn the approach of community-driven, decentralized water retention. In addition, this is also the launching of a university without walls and without boundaries. And so we're really hoping this information to spread all around the world to all the communities in need. And so by joining this trip, you have a really unique opportunity to be at the very start of a global movement. And so January 11th to the 25th, you got to manage your own travels into and out of Delhi. But outside of that, everything during the trip is arranged. It's really well curated. You're going to be well taken care of. Food, hotels, all of that covered. Uh, and so it's a really nice, easy way to travel with amazing people into a place that is one of the most different places I've been on this planet. Uh, really incredible peoples, really incredible history in place. Uh, so if you have the ability, I can't emphasize enough. I think this is a once in a lifetime opportunity that you do not want to miss out on. So I'm excited to join a lot of you for this Water Sutra in India.